And dreams don't usually follow a purpose like that, do they? Takeaway number five, and this also is another big one. They all sincerely cared about me and were aware of my life. Each had a singular message intended, intending to encourage me and to keep me moving on. Because that's all we could do in life. We have to keep moving on, swimming forward, right? Well, they wanted to make sure that I, I knew that they were okay and that they loved me and that I needed to move on with my life. And that our separation has to be this way, just for now. And like one said, you need to move on. <laughs> Which my friend told me, that sounds like her, telling you to move on, Tim. <laughs> I don't know if he believes in these things or not. Uh, I had to laugh at that myself. So they all sincerely cared about me. Um, death and time had not phased or diminished their affection for me at all. And I'm sure the same goes for you with loved ones you've lost. Death and time and separation. Temporary. And it hadn't diminished their, their affection and love for you. And they, they, I think they know what you're going through. I think they can see your life. It's just, just for me. It's, you know, it's what I got from this stuff. Takeaway number six. Heaven's glory is kept a secret. In two of, okay, in two of my visitations, I was in heaven with uh, formerly, dis, hard to say deceased, because they look more alive than I ever have. In both of those, there was a greater amount that I am aware of as in where it existed and that it happened. And in both, my mother, I think she gave me a, a tour of heaven, honestly. I think she was really excited for me. And my friend Brian, well, we were walking down a path and he was talking a great deal about life, my life and other things, but I wasn't allowed to remember that. In both of them, I was only allowed to take back to this life and earth the, the, the message they gave me at the end. You know, remember, Tim, it's going to work out for you in the end. It's all going to work out for you in the end. And my mother's, it has to be this way just for now. When she parted, went back up to heaven, and I had to come back down to this earth and carry on. And it's not easy. I still grieve, but I know that I have to carry on in life, just like Jen. It was hard to see her again. And she looked like she had more to tell me because she was walking right up to me. Uh, from the void and uh, saying, you need to move on with your life now. And it looks like she had something else to say. And I, was, I, couldn't, I was shocked. Not that she looked horrible, but it really shocked me. And I turned away. This wasn't like a dream. It was real. It was her. And she looked all right. I wished I hadn't turned away, but I did. All right. So, heaven's glory was kept a secret. Um... There was a greater amount that I'm aware of, as in aware it actually happened, but there's no memory of what transpired in that time. I only vividly recall the end part, both of which was the end of a period of time walking and talking. Why was the greater part kept a secret? You know, I've, oh, I examine these things and I share my thoughts with you. Either, what did I say? Where's the other page for this? Huh. Oh. Well, that's not right. I'm missing pages. That's not it either. All right, I'm back. I got the missing page. This was from uh, takeaway number six. And, um... that heaven's glory was kept a secret, that I wasn't allowed to remember uh, the greater portion of my visit with my mother in heaven. Whether you want to believe that or not, I'm just sharing with you my experience. And I wasn't allowed to uh, remember the conversation with my friend Brian in heaven, that I know there was, that we'd been walking down that path talking about life and things for a long time, but I was only allowed to remember the end of that conversation 
when that came to an end and I, we stopped walking and he told me to remember, it's going to work out for you in the end. And my mom, I felt, that, I feel like she gave me a tour through heaven, which uh, showed me some things. I think she was really excited for me. In her way, she seemed really excited for me. <laughs> but I wasn't allowed to remember those things, only the end, where she took my hands and says, it has to be this way. She said, just for now. And Larissa, my hands. So why aren't we allowed to remember, no, why aren't we allowed to see these things? Um, either I can't, uh, here's a missing page comprehend or process such information as heaven's glories and uh, secrets in this human form that I, I couldn't, I won't be able to, we can't fathom it in this form. Or maybe it's kept a secret because it's part of God's plan, you know. I don't know. But there was more to that, those visitations, but I wasn't allowed to remember most of it, just the end. All right, moving on here, because I don't want to be forever on this like I tend to go sometimes. Takeaway number seven. I learned through these visitations, particularly the last one, pray as you feel led to pray. That was, I think, the biggest thing I learned from this. So long as it does not go against the teachings of the Bible, pray to God to guide and teach you in this. God, show me how to, I was desperate. Teach me how to pray for this. Should I be praying for this? I got, yes, yes, definitely. You're doing the right thing. Teach me how to pray. And he taught me. Uh, pray from your heart and soul and spirit. Talk to them. And I believe they can hear you. I mean, pray to God first. Don't put them before God and Jesus. Because we all need Christ and Jesus. Us and the hereafter. They're God and that doesn't change. But when you talk to them, I think they can hear you. That if you talk to them, I think they can hear you. And I felt that I needed to talk to the most recent Jen and assure her that she uh, knew Christ in this life, and I saw it, and that she needed to call on Christ. I, I prayed. As, I'm not going to share everything I prayed, but I I talked to her also to assure her that she did a lot of good things for people and different things. I'm not going to cover. So pray to God to guide and teach you in this. And Jesus Christ, definitely, he's the key in this too. But pray from your heart and soul and your spirit. How you feel, use your emotions. Not just your emotions, but how you feel led by the spirit to pray for them. And talk to them from your heart, soul, and spirit too. Because that's what it's about at this point. Not this stuff that we process our earthly existence, I think, but from your heart, soul, and your spirit. That was a big takeaway for me. Pray as you feel led to pray, so long as it doesn't go against the teachings of Christ and the Bible. Pray to God to guide and teach you in this. Pray from your heart and soul and spirit and talk to them if and when you do. Not knowing if they're hearing you, but I believe they do. My evidence is they do. Also, um, from your heart, soul, and spirit to them. Takeaway number eight. I'm getting towards the end of this. Now there's not a rush, is there? Well, I don't want to digress like I always do. Don't be afraid to ask God to allow them to visit you, to help you in your grieving. It doesn't hurt to ask. And I did ask God, if it be in his will, humbly request that he allow my mother to visit me in some way because I needed help. And the same with Jen. I asked God after my, my mother visited me, definitely. I, for me personally, I have no doubt in any of this. But then I asked, if it be your will, Lord, I, I felt that she was all right. But I felt a little humble to ask for further help. and But I did anyway because God, like I... Red, he, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And uh, what was the first one? You take it right out of the Bible, folks. God cares about it. Um, Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. Don't be afraid to ask for help or ask to allow God to 
allow them to visit you in some, may not be like this, it may be in some other way. I'm sure you all have your own stories, and maybe I'll get to read them in the comments, but it may be different than what I experienced, but you know. <clears throat> so that was, I think, takeaway number eight. Um, it doesn't hurt to ask. Then just leave it to God, leave it there, and try to move on with your life. It may happen in the future when you least expect it. And that was my experience. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting either, any of this stuff to happen on all three of these visitations. At 17, then the two within the past two years. I mean, I don't even think, I think I was more or less done mourning Brian. I don't think, it's like a year and a half later, he's a friend of mine. But it happened with God's timing. So leave it in God's hands. Take away number nine. There are 11 of these. This is an odd observation. But, you know, I've heard people, well, are you going to be cremated or are you going to be buried in the ground? You know, unembalmed or bombed, embalmed, whatever. And I've wondered, you know, which, which is right? You know, is there a right or wrong in this? And uh, the church teaches one thing and the others teach this and that. And, other religions teach us and that, and based on what I saw of my three friends, or my friend and my two loved ones uh, that I've been talking about, and I told you they all looked fine. In fact, they looked better than fine. They are doing really good. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not like Hollywood where they're like acting like frozen statues, you know, gray and mystical and... You know, like Don Giovanni, you know, with, uh, I forgot his name, the, oh God, the commissar that come out to visit him from beyond. It doesn't look like that, you know, Don Giovanni, you know, <laughs> Mozart. I used to love that. I used to, I used to love that a lot. I'm going to have to revisit that. But it wasn't like that. They looked quite alive quite in color, quite vibrant. Um, I will say, I don't recall when either of them talked to me. I could see my mother face to face when she held my hands right across, right across holding my hands. And I could see Jen, she got about as close for me, closer to me than the camera and me right now. She was walking up to me out of the dark. And uh, the funny thing, I will say, when she came out of the dark, it wasn't like she, like, fade in, fade out. No, it was all pitch black, and then there she was, completely lit up, illuminated. I don't know what you would call it, but uh, just she was right there, and she was just walking up to me with a message. Um, but do you get cremated, or do you get buried whole? Brian was buried in a casket. Uh, the other two weren't. They were cremated. And... I think it doesn't matter. Based upon what I've seen of these three spirits in the hereafter, having known them, and some were cremated, some were buried, uh, based upon these, to me, it doesn't seem to affect the person at all in the afterlife. And it shouldn't, should it? Uh, cremated or buried, it doesn't seem to affect them at all. I mean, if somebody could die underwater, maybe in a submarine accident, or they could be burned up in a fire. It doesn't really affect it, does it? Well, that's one thing I noticed because I'd say I was making funeral plans for myself. I know it's cheaper one way than the other. I'm trying to think if something should happen to me that uh, those that have to take care of it try to lessen the expense. And it doesn't seem to make any difference based on these observations. Just saying that. I'm all for being reverent, though, you know. All right, that was number nine. And I guess I only had ten of these. I said, oh, okay, takeaway number ten. I have eleven. I've got it listed as eleven, but takeaway number ten. My first visitation implied that my departed friend could see my future. And he could, because he told me at age 17 what was to come. And I didn't get to keep all of it, but I kept enough of it. And everything he said, I never would have thought would have happened, but happened. 
all of what he said has come true, but the ending part where he said, remember, it's all going to work out for you in the end. He said, I want you to remember that, Tim. It's going to work out for you in the end. It's all going to work out in the end. Poof. And I'm like, the end of what? The end of my life? The here? The end of a period of tribulations? I didn't get that. I think there's a reason. I don't think God likes uh, plot spoilers. I don't know that. It's just a thought. Game spoilers, you know? Whatever. Um, but that wasn't really takeaway number 10. But I did observe that they could see, in, he could see into the future. And it could. Okay. Um, but he was deeply, deep. One thing I got. I want to impart that during his conversation with me, he was deeply, deeply, sincerely concerned for me and my life. He, I could hear it in his tone of voice, the concern and the passion and the love. He was very concerned for me, between him and me, and he wanted to encourage me. That's takeaway 10, that he was really concerned for me from beyond the grave. Concerned for me more than I even knew him to be when he walked among me on this dirt ball called Earth. This beautiful green and blue dirt ball, whatever you want to call it. I'm not putting down the Earth. It's God's creation, but... He's deeply concerned for me in my life and my path here. He wanted to give me encouragement. And I have recalled his words through my life in some of my hardest times. Takeaway number 10. This is a big one. I think I would like to impart what I've learned on all three of these. Your loved ones care about you still. They care about you still. It's not diminished. My mom and Jen gave me some words of advice to help me move forward, to encourage me to move on with my life. And Brian gave me some words to encourage me throughout my life to hang in there because I had some tough times coming and he told me about it in detail and these things came true. Finally, takeaway number 11. That's it. <clears throat> Oops, knocked over one of my men. Two of my visitations had the same best basic message. It has to be this way just for now. And Tim, you need to move on with your life. This is it's definitely not a bad thing to mourn. Whatever, may, however you do it, it's not a bad thing to mourn at all. I'm not trying to say to get over your mourning. I don't think it's like trying to get over a cold or a flu. I don't think that's right. I think you need to go through whatever process you do. I think it's unhealthy to try to force yourself or somebody else to get over mourning. I don't think it's something that should be forced. It's a hard thing losing someone close and integral to your life here. But no, capital letters, the separation is temporary. And it is also critical that you move on with what remains of your own life here. We're all put here for a reason. I don't think it was just to go through life mourning. I don't know. I don't think it was. It's, it's part of the experience here. To be, God makes a big deal of it in the Bible, so it is a big deal. And like in Re Revelations, it's not going to be that way just here. This is just something we have to go through here. Part of our life in this fallen world. So, but God, they have, they have, yeah. But no, the separation is temporary, and it is critical that you move on with what remains of your time here. These are things I learned in my visitations. Prolonged grief may be holding you back, and I don't know this next statement, but I know prolonged grief can hold people back in life. I know this firsthand, and it's still holding me back in ways. I'm not completely beyond it. But, but it may also be holding them back in some way. And I got that feeling... Uh, I'm not saying I have any proof of this. I'm just saying what I witnessed and feeling I had. 
that I need to move on with my life. It was for my own good. But I think it was, it was some way holding her back too, Jen. And that she was on a, she wasn't, in, I didn't see her in her glorified form yet. Not, but she definitely uh, is in God's will, I think, in keeping, which is good. And I don't know about this thing about purgatory or things like that, but I don't say they don't exist. But she, I don't know what's going on, but I got the feeling that it was for my own good to move on with my life, but she also needed it too. That, that she had to, uh, but I don't know this. I could be way off track. You only have my observations. These are what I'm making of it. To move on with your life in no way implies a dis diminishing of affection or respect, love, and reverence for your departed loved one. In no way does it imply that. Imply that. Moving on with your life. Do so only at your pace and your way. I don't think there's a textbook on this. I'm just giving you my lessons. Maybe someday you can help somebody else out that's grieving, mourning hard, because it hurts. It hurts bad. No rush, and it's not a priority. You know, it's not like I've got to get through this, I've got to get through this. You may feel that way. I don't think you should. I think you should let it take its natural course. I'm just trying to give you some observations that may help you along. This is just my own lessons from my experiences. Yours may be totally different. I'm just trying to share my testimony and maybe, you know, give glory to God, but maybe also to help somebody out. And then maybe you'll in turn help somebody out too. And if you have testimonies of these things, I encourage you to share them like I'm doing here or in your own way with people you know, or I'm pretty isolated in life, but everybody I know, and I still know a few people, have heard these stories. They've heard right from me, and also I share it on YouTube. That's really all I had for this. Um, I will say when my mom came to me, I had great healing from that. Instant. It was like last night I woke up, I saw this tooth issue going on, and wow, was it ever. My whole side of my head and my jaw hurt from it, and I'm still waiting for the dentist to do something. And then suddenly, for some reason, it just stopped hurting. I mean, it's still there. I'm feeling it still, but it, when my mom came to me like she did, it definitely was something I felt I needed to share with my family, but also with my friends and people here, and I have, and I have, but it helped me out. I felt better the next day. My mom was alive, and she still loves me, and she's still watching me, you know, and she's doing really good, and like she said, it has to be this way, and she emphasized the second part of that sentence, just for now, emphasized just for now. So take some encouragement. Your separations from your loved ones are real here, but it's just temporary. It's just for now. You've got your own mission to work on. But you grieve. God bless you. Know that Christ and God, like he said, I mean, take some comfort in the word, not this video, but they really, God listens to your grieving. And uh, about love and relationships and sorrow. And uh, prayers don't fall and tears don't fall in deaf ears. And uh, I'm repeating myself. But I know some of you are going to go through this and have gone through it. And I know there really aren't any words that can help out. But I take some hope in God's word, namely, and any of these experiences I share with you, I hope they help you out and that you in turn will help somebody else out someday because it's part of the human walk here. You know, the people I'm talking about lost loved ones. Brian's father died when he was a kid. That bothered him. He was grieving right up to the day he died. 
not but 18 years old. Jen lost her family members and she was grieving real hard right before she passed. And my mom had lost people, of course, she was 86. She lost a lot of loved ones to her life, siblings, parents, grandparents, her spouse, first spouse died. It's part of life. And so we have to do what everybody does. I hope this has helped somebody somehow. And if any way I've offended anybody over this, um, let me know. Uh, I'm talking about some people that are, you know, people that people know still, my mom and Jen. But they're doing well. And I'd like people to know that. And I've actually told some of her friends that I saw her. And one really liked it. She's got a big smile on her face. I said, I'm going way out on a limb telling you this, but she, I saw her. And she lit right up. I said, she's doing good. She's all right. Looked like her old self. And told me I had to move on. And I told somebody else that knew her that, and he just kind of... <laughs> What's that look? I mean, I give people a look. I know somebody that was a flat earther. They believed the earth was flat. You know, conspiracy theories? And they were trying to tell me how the earth is flat. And I just kind of listened to what they said, and it's kind of like, all right. <laughs> I get that sometimes. But I, th I think for me to talk about spiritual stuff is not anywhere the same. But some people have a hard time believing that stuff too. God bless each of you. And uh, help each other out, encourage each other. Share your testimonies. You'll know when to, you'll know when, and pray about it. Pray to Jesus to help you, to use you as an instrument. Uh, always pray about that. He'll put the opportunities before you, and you'll know what to do. So, all right, take care, all of you.